Hello boys and girls. Today I'm going to read you the story of Helen Keller as we wrap up our Wax Museum week. Um, we are going to read a non-fiction story and as we're going through maybe you can point out some of the text features in a non-fiction story. And here is our first one, a table of contents. As you can see, this is a pretty long story, so I'm going to read a little bit faster, and I might not read every caption um, and every little detail as we go, but feel free to pause the video so you can read the page on your own. Here we go. Who was Helen Keller? Close your eyes and cover your ears with your hands. It's dark and quiet. Can you imagine living in such a world? Helen Keller lived like that. She was blind and deaf, but she didn't let that stop her from learning as much as she could. She used what she learned to help other blind or deaf people live better lives. In Keller's time, disabled people were often ignored or sent to live away from their families. Keller worked to change how others thought about disabled people. She wrote articles and books. She traveled the world and spoke out. She inspired disabled people with her courage. She helped change unfair treatment for other people too. Growing up. Keller was born on June 27, 1880. That's a long time ago. She lived with her family in Tuscumbia, Alabama, USA. When she was about a year and a half old, she got sick with a high fever. Soon, she felt better. But she didn't blink when the sun shone in her face. She couldn't hear the dinner bell ring. Doctors said she had lost her sight and hearing forever. And on this page, boys and girls, this is the actual home where she grew up in. For young Keller, the world had become dark, soundless, and confusing. Most children learned to speak by hearing and watching others. Keller could do neither. When she tried to speak, no one could understand. She must have felt lonely and frustrated. She kicked and threw things. Her parents were frustrated too, but they wouldn't give up on their smart, spirited daughter. in her time. When Keller was a girl in the 1880s, many things were different from how they are today. The transportation was different. People uh, traveled by train and steamboat or wagons. They had to heat their home with wood and pump water from a well, which was outside. Back then, boys and girls, women did not have the right to vote yet. And instead of going to the grocery store, people raised their farm animals and they grew fruits and vegetables in their own gardens. And school, um, children were taught at home or in a school that only had one big room and there was a bunch of boys and girls of all different ages in the same room. Or if your family was really wealthy, you might attend a boarding school. Learning Letters and Words A few years later, Keller's mother read about a school for blind and deaf children. They, there, students learned how to fingerspell words into a person's hand. She wondered if her little girl could learn, too. Keller and her parents visited Alexander Graham Bell in Washington, D.C. He was known for teaching deaf children. Bell helped the Kellers find a teacher for their daughter. This is a picture, boys and girls, of Alexander Graham Bell, and it says that he is most known for inventing the telephone. That teacher was Annie Sullivan. She arrived when Keller was six years old. Sullivan fingerspelled words into her students' hands, but Keller didn't understand. One day, Sul Sullivan fingerspelled W A T E. At the same time, 
She pumped water onto Keller's hand. Suddenly, Keller understood that the liquid she felt had a name and that Sullivan was spelling it. She danced for joy. She learned 30 more words before bedtime. Keller couldn't wait to learn more. Within a year, she knew more than 900 words. She mastered Braille and typing by age 10. Later, she attended high school in New York City. Sullivan went with Keller and finger spelled for her. So down here, this is a picture of a person reading Braille. At the time, few disabled people went to college, but Keller did. She insisted on the same treatment as other students. With Sullivan's help, she read books and wrote papers. Here's some cool facts about Helen Keller. Again, if you wanna pause the video really quick, you can go ahead and read some of those. Finding her voice. By now, many people had heard about Keller. She was the young, blind, and deaf woman who could read and write. She used her growing fame to help others understand the lives of disabled people. Through writing, she shared her ideas about equal treatment. But writing and fingerspelling were sometimes too slow for Keller. She wanted to use her voice to speak about change. Helen practiced speaking. In 1909, she got help from a singing teacher. A few years later, she was able to give her first speech. She kept practicing. She gave more speeches. She spoke up not only for disabled people, but also for children and the poor. A suffragette, I'm sorry, as a suffragette, she spoke up for women too. Again, if you want to pause the video, you can read the timeline at the bottom and some of the other words to know and facts about her. In 1924, Keller began working for the American Foundation for the Blind. She raised money that was used to help blind people get education and jobs. In the early 1930s, U.S. lawmakers were writing a new law to help disabled people. Keller published for the law to include the blind. She also worked to make Braille the standard system of reading and writing for blind people. Remembering Helen Keller. Keller spent her life helping others. Her words showed the world how much disabled people could learn and do. Her work changed many lives for the better. Keller died at her home on June 1st, 1968. She was almost 88 years old. She is remembered for her hard work trying to make the world a better place for everyone. And here is a quiz at the end. Again, if you want to stop the video and see if you can answer some of the questions from the story, you can. And at the end, we have a glossary of some of the words that we read about in our book. And that's the end of the story, boys and girls. I really enjoyed reading this book about Helen Keller to you. And I look forward to reading to you again on Monday.